In this video we're going to take a look at creating a frequency table, also known sometimes as a frequency distribution table. The first thing that we want to know about uh, frequency tables is why. Why do we need to make a frequency table? Well, it allows us to organize data and start to make some sense of what might that data be telling us. And so as we look at our data set here, um, I doesn't really tell me a whole lot, but maybe I could organize it into a frequency table and that might help me to uh, learn more about what that data is telling us. So uh, the first thing that we want to do is figure out the minimum and the maximum value that are in our data. So as I look at this, I see a zero right here and I don't see any negatives. So it looks to me like the minimum value must be zero. Then as I look for the largest, it looks like the max is 13. So I need to be able to go from zero to 13 uh, in my classes. That's the, the groups that we're gonna set up to organize our data. So one way to do that, to figure out how many groups that we should make it into, um, typically somewhere in the neighborhood of five-ish is a good number. And uh, if we set this up, we could go by twos. That would get us seven. So now let's try that. Let's, let's start by uh, going by twos here. So we're gonna make a table. And in that table, we're gonna put three columns. The first column is gonna be the classes. And so that's gonna be our ranges that uh, we're gonna sort our data into. Then here we're going to have our tally for each of those ranges, the, the classes. And then finally we will have our frequencies. Now, we said that we're going to go by twos. So I'm going to start with zero because I need to go from zero to 13. So I'm going to start with zero and I'm going to go by twos. So two, four, six, eight, eight. Come on, you booger. There we go. 10, 12. Okay, and 14 is too big. We don't need to go that far because our maximum value is just 13. Okay, so now I want to get the other end of each of my classes. And for this case, since we're dealing with just nice whole numbers here, we only have to worry about all the whole numbers, including those in our classes. So from 0 to 1, so this would be 0 and 1 go in this uh, row, 2 to 3, 4 to 5, 6 to 7, 8 to 9, 10 to 11, and finally 12 to 13. Okay. Now, just a couple things to be aware of here in terms of those classes. First thing, we have to make sure that we use the same interval all the way through. And so notice how, remember how I counted by twos here, and then I came back and filled these in. That's an easy way to make sure that we're not missing or changing our interval because that will throw things off. The second thing that we have to do is make sure there's no overlap between the two because we won't know where to put the tally. Sometimes I see students go 0, 1, and then 1 to 2 here. Well, if you get a 1, then where does it go? Does it go there or there? Eesh. Okay, so we can't have that. And so we need to be careful. And we also need to make sure that we're not missing any values. And in this case, we have the 1 and the 2. Well, there are some values that would come between there, like 1.5 but our data doesn't have any decimals so we don't have to worry about uh, including that. If it did, maybe we might have to go from 0 to 1.99999 and then this starts at 2 and goes to 3.999, something like that. But we want to make sure that we don't miss any uh, possible values and that we don't overlap and that we use the same intervals. Now, we're going to go ahead and just go through our data and tally up where it would be located. So first spot, uh, our first value is 0, so that's going to go right there. Next up we've got 10, we'll put that one there, 1. If you want, as you're doing this, you could cross off the values to make sure that you keep your place. 10 is the next one, 
Then we go to 12. Next up, we've got 10 again. And we're at 8. And we're at 3. And then 6. That's our first row is done. Then we go 7, 12, 7. Oops. And then 12. And then 5, 10, 2. 12 and 5 okay and then finally our bottom row there 13 6 9 12 5 5 2 4 and 9 okay so then we're going to count up those tally marks to get our frequency. So this one we've got 2. Three in the next one, five in the next one, four, three, four, and six. Now, if we notice, this starts to bring the information into focus a little bit because we can see that the largest frequency fits into this last group right here 12 to 13 there were the most there were six there and then the second most frequent was four to five the smallest was from zero to one okay it would be hard to see that just by looking at our data sitting there now it can vary uh, depending on our our frequency table can look quite a bit different depending on what we choose for our classes so let's say rather than going by twos what if we went by fours what would happen then okay we could also go by threes what would happen then so let's let's go by threes and see how that one will look a little bit different and or if it does look a little bit different who knows let's see so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make another table here we're gonna have our classes first and this time we're gonna go by threes just to see how that kinda changes things or if it does change things I'm kinda letting the cat out of the bag there maybe so we have our tally and we have our frequency now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go by threes okay and we still need to go from 0 to 13 so I'm gonna go 0 and then I'm gonna go 3 and then I'll go 6 9 and 12 okay going by threes so notice this time we have only one two three four five groups versus the seven now I'm gonna fill in the other end here so this one goes from 0 to 2 this one goes from 3 to 5, 6 to 8. Remember, it's just one less than that number that's coming next. So then 11. And then this one, the next number would be 15. So one less than that would be 14. Again, making sure that we don't miss any values here and that we have the same interval on all of them. Okay, so let's go through again and tally them up. All right, so 0 is going to go right there. Then we've got 10, then we've got 1, then we've got 10, then we've got 12, 10, then we've got 8, 3, 6, first row is done, 7, 12, 7, then we've got 12, and we've got 5, 10, 2, 12, 5, and then we're in the bottom row, 13, 6 goes there, 9 goes there, 12, 5, 5, two four and nine okay so now let's count up those frequencies 
we've got four that go from zero to two then we've got six that go from three to five five that go from six to eight six that go from nine to eleven and six that go from twelve to fourteen now notice in this case it looks it's pretty flat versus over in this one we had we went from two was the smallest to six being the largest in this one it's four five and then there's three sixes huh interesting so depending on the classes that we choose our frequencies can look a little bit different and depending on what we're trying to do with our data that might be important to us so there's something to explore further and uh, we'll perhaps uh, delve into that in another video but this video was just about creating a frequency table why do we care about frequency tables because they help us to organize the information and start to pull out well, what is this telling us first thing that we want to do is figure out the minimum and maximum values and then we want to break down that range so that we have somewhere between four and seven groups or classes that we're going to break things into start with the smallest number and then count up from there and then fill in the other end of your ranges noticing that that's just going to be one less making sure that you don't lose track of any numbers and that you're going by the same interval I hope this video was helpful keep working hard on your math organizing information with those frequency tables you got this